Welcome to Cream of the Crop Older for 2022. Before we dive into the books that made this year's cream list, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the process. The Maine State Library receives almost 3,000 children's and young adult review books from over 75 publishing houses each year. These books form the main examination collection of children's and young adult books. Book reviewers read, then review the books on the website. As someone reviews a book, they indicate whether they think it should be nominated for Cream of the Crop because in their opinion, it is excellent. The members on the Cream of the Crop committee then read the nominee and make the decision as to whether or not the book makes the final list. And what we end up with is the presentation before you today. If you're interested in joining Book Review, an application can be found on the Book Review website. Cream of the Crop Older is looking for one or two new members to join our team. If you're interested, please reach out to me through my email that you can see on the screen. This year's presenters are Jan Hamilton, retired youth services librarian, Lee Remick, library assistant at York Middle School, Christy Favaloro, teen services librarian from Skidomfa Library, and me, Carrie Letary, library media specialist at York Middle School. Without further ado, here are the 2022 Cream of the Crop Older selections. White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. On its surface, White Smoke is the sort of creepy haunted house type horror thriller that will keep you up at night. But the many subplots and abrupt yet surprise ending are what bring this YA novel to another level. Marigold and her newly blended family are headed across the country for a fresh start. A promising track star at her California high school, an unfortunate bed bug infestation in her home leaves Marigold with severe anxiety. Treated with Percocet prescribed by the doctors and self-medicating with marijuana, Marigold overdoses, ends up in a treatment center, and is expelled from school. After her release, her family, mother, brother, stepfather, and stepsister, as well as the family dog, head out to the Midwest where her mom has been offered a free house for a community artist residency. Once they get there, they are horrified to see that the town is a rundown, depressed shell, and their neighborhood is in shambles, with street after street of burned out houses seemingly abandoned. And while their house appears to be newly renovated, it also appears to be haunted. There are so many other facets to this story besides a haunting, drug addiction and recovery, the biracial blended family dynamic, gentrification, urban fol folklore, sinister business plots, and good old-fashioned, goosebump-worthy, jump-out-of-the-closet creepiness. The sudden, shocking ending will leave you with questions galore and a desire for a sequel. Recommended for grades 9 through 12. You'd Be Home Now by Kathleen Glasgow. Emery has always felt invisible in her well-to-do family next to her beautiful, smart older sister and drug-addicted older brother. She acts out in private ways such as stealing small things and engaging in sexual behaviors. But a car accident one night changes everything. Her brother Joey is sent to rehab while Emery has to deal with the fallout from the accident, healing her own injuries as she navigates the anger felt by the community for the death of her classmate. Things get even harder for her when her parents expect her to keep Joey from relapsing when he returns home. Not only does this novel tackle the timely issue of how drug addiction can affect whole families and communities, it also takes an honest look at issues like self-esteem, teen sex, suicide, and having the courage to be true to oneself. The author doesn't shy away from showcasing the truth about these issues with a stark look at the impact on all too many real families, including those whose money fails to insulate them from heartache. Recommended for grades 9 and up. Taking Up Space by Allison Gerber. Sarah is a 12-year-old whose mother has an eating disorder. Mom's food issues and a lack of food in the house have spilled over to Sarah, who is constantly hungry and is well on her way to developing her own eating disorder. She loves basketball, but she is also maturing and growing, and the changes in her body are impacting her level of play, as is her lack of good nutrition. Besides her eating problems, Sarah has other issues, including navigating her best friend liking the same boy, two bullies on her basketball team, and her crush asking her to be partners in a cooking competition. With a nudge from Sarah's best friend, a caring coach is able to get her the help she needs. After seeing her guidance counselor along with her parents, the whole family is guided to therapy, setting Sarah on the path to recovery. The author does a great job addressing the very real, often serious problems that confront middle schoolers, including body image and self-esteem, 
bullying, and budding relationships while showing the avenues for getting help from grown-ups in a really positive light. Recommended for grades five through eight. Red, White, and Whole by Rajni LaRocca. Reha is an Indian American middle schooler who feels torn between being true to her family and her heritage and wanting to fit in with the other kids at school. When her mother becomes ill, Reha is determined to help heal her despite her overwhelming fear of blood. As Reha struggles with her mother's illness and dire prognosis, she realizes how she relies on not just her family for support, but her new friends as well. This beautifully written novel and verse flows seamlessly through a difficult subject and plot line. Reha is relatable as she struggles with many issues typical of any middle schooler. She's also deeply devoted to her family and her Indian heritage. Navigating these two identities is at the core of this book about family, friendship, loss, and finding oneself. Dragonfly Girl by Marty Linebeck. Fans of international spy thrillers will not be disappointed by Marty Linebeck's Dragonfly Girl. Kira is the epitome of a misfit, nerdy teenager, barely passing high school, yet excelling in science. Living with her cancer-stricken mom and deeply in debt to a loan shark, she enters a science contest for PhD students in hopes of winning the large cash prize. As one of four winners, she embarks on an all-expense paid trip to Sweden to present her paper and collect the money. But when a rival young scientist with a grudge bitterly reveals that she is only in high school, she fears all is lost. Luckily, she is offered a job in a top-secret laboratory by a professor who knew her brilliant but dead father. Soon after starting work, she begins helping out on an experiment that eventually leads to her bringing back a rat from the dead. Now considered a scientific genius, she is thrust into the world of dark international Cold War dealings and ends up fighting for her life far from friends and family. This book is fast-paced and exciting with plot twists throughout. Enhancing the action are the location changes from the United States to Europe and even Russia, giving this novel that true international spy feel. Kira must decide who she can trust while following her instincts to survive. The reader is introduced to plenty of villains, yet Kira does have a few good friends in her corner. She is a likable character and one can't help but root for her. There is an abundance of scientific dialogue throughout the book, but it's written so it is easy to understand and doesn't slow down the action. Anyone who likes James Bond or Jason Bourne type spy thrillers will love Dragonfly Girl. Recommended for grades 8 through 12. The Darkness Outside Us by Elliot Schrafer. Ambrose and Kodiak are alone in space. Far into the future, there are only two remaining countries on Earth, locked in a cold war, yet working together to find a new planet to inhabit. A joint rescue mission has been launched to rescue Ambrose's sister Minerva, who is sending distress signals from the new planet's first colony. Will they be able to move past their ingrained differences and work together to rescue Minerva in time? Is the operating system running the spaceship helping them? or up to something more sinister. On its surface, this is a slick, fast-paced, engaging sci-fi thriller. But beneath the mystery and tale of survival is a beautifully written novel about love and humanity. The book's two compelling characters show us love and grief and loneliness and hope over and over in stunning displays of introspection and intimacy against the backdrop of the vastness of space. Recommended for grades nine and Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. Thomas's prequel to the acclaimed The Hate You Give, Concrete Rose details Maverick's life as a teen father in Garden Heights, while his own father serves time in prison. Faced with decisions on how to support his child, Maverick is not always a likable character, which is part of what makes this book so real and appealing. Black boys and men in the United States are usually faced with far more challenges than their white counterparts, and Thomas cracks open stereotypes and gives voice to their stories. Recommended for grades 10 and up. Blackout by Danielle Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, Nick Stone, Angie Thomas, Ashley Woodfolk, and Nicola Yoon. Six interconnected short stories take place in New York City during a blackout. 
While the characters have to make adjustments as the city grinds to a halt, they discover that the people who live there come alive in new ways. A young adult novel that is well-written and would be enjoyed by teens who appreciate romance and human connection, this book focuses carefully on the perspectives of Black adolescents. One unique feature of this book is that one of the stories is broken up into chapters that are wedged between the other stories. This longer story helps to weave everything together and makes for an interesting reader experience. The Life I'm In by Sharon Flake. Simultaneously difficult to read and impossible to put down, this companion novel to Flake's The Skin I'm In picks up several years later with the first book's bully as the main character. When Char's parents died, her older sister became her guardian and her whole world flipped upside down. She ends up running away, parenting an infant that is not her own, and becoming trapped in a human trafficking situation. This book is not a feel-good read, but it is so important and very well written. Recommended for grades 10 through 12. The Robber Girl by Franny Billingsley the robber girl has lived with the gentleman robbers for as long as she can remember. When a heist goes wrong, she ends up staying with a kind town judge and his wife in their picture-perfect cottage, while the lead gentleman robber is jailed and awaits trial. Formerly nameless, she chooses to call herself Starling, and while learning about the town and people around her, her past begins to reveal itself. Young Starling carries her faithful dagger with her everywhere, and although carefully hidden, the dagger has a voice of its own and guides her as she is faced with difficult decisions. The trouble comes when she tries to peel herself away from the grasp of the dagger and the gentleman in order to find her true self. This book is listed elsewhere as a middle grade novel, but we recommend it as a younger YA option. With important themes such as abuse and trauma laced together with mystery and an old Western flair, this book will certainly appeal to readers transitioning into more serious content. An Emotion of Great Delight by Tara Mafi. Shadi and her family are Muslim and living in a post 9-11 world. She struggles to deal with the grief of numerous traumatic events, including her father being hospitalized long-term, her brother dying, and the unexplained loss of her best friend. Readers begin to wonder how we might make space for joy in our lives, even while we are grieving. Themes include mental health, suicide ideation and self-harm, Islamophobia, and relationships. Recommended for grades seven and up. The Seventh Raven by David Elliott is a fanciful and enticing retelling of a Brothers Grimm fairy tale. Have you ever wanted to fly? Would you like to escape if your older six brothers were all named Jack? Upon the near death of an infant sister, the boy's father curses them all. This book offers a view of each character's personality and reveals a peek into their changing lives. Written in verse, Elliott brings the tale of the seventh raven to life packing the story with emotion. This compelling fantasy is complicated by haunting graphic black and white art work, which expresses feeling of entrapment felt by the brothers. Readers will be surprised when they learn who is the brave sibling. This flowing verse novel is a must read for middle school students. Even more satisfactory is listening to the rhyme of the seventh Raven as a read aloud. When the World Was Ours by Liz Kelser. If you enjoyed Number the Stars by Lois Lowry, you will not be disappointed by this historic fiction. Before World War II began, three children in Australia, in Austria shared a close relationship, but that friendship started to fall apart in 1936. When the World War when the World Was Ours is a heartbreaking story about how life situations tore two Jewish and one Christian child apart. This is an emotional book to read. Kessler's writing hits hard and does not hold back the reality. The friends do not live happily ever after, and there is always the horror of the war. 
these families are forever changed. The storyline is powerful, exposing the suffering, humiliation, and terror of the Jewish population, which led to head hate crimes and deportation. Kessler borrowed her storyline from a true family experience, making this well-written and researched book extremely credible. Even if this book exposes inhumanity, it also notes the existence of compassion, kindness, and resilience. Keep a box of Kleenex close and know that love conquers fear. Suggested for grade five to eight students and recommended for book groups. Pony by R.J. Palacio. Pony is a fantastic adventure quest story about a boy, his imaginary friend, and a magical pony. Written by the author of Wonder, this is an engrossing and dramatic story with themes of family and challenges that have to be overcome. Silas is a brave and wise 12-year-old who sets out on an adventure with his protective yet unseen friend. This unique storyline is set in the late 1800s in the Wild West. Well-developed characters, action drama, issues of trust and love combine to complete a near-perfect package for readers 10 years and above. Pony is lyrical. The writing is hold your breath beautiful and perhaps this reviewer's most satisfying read of the year. This is a book with powerful interactions. It will fly off the shelves of middle school media centers and public libraries. Listen to the audio of Pony. It's beyond amazing. The Girl from the Sea by Molly Ostertig. If you love the depth of emotion, realism of the text, and colors used in great illustrations, then you're going to really love this graphic novel. The storyline will be appreciated by preteens and young teens who are experiencing family dysfunction and relationship problems, as well as questioning their sexual orientation. Actually, any reader will, pro will appreciate this Ostertig because it fills the text with meaningful content and has drawn fantastic illustrations complete with outstanding color selections. Although seals, selkies, and humans all have their place where they're accepted by peers, a crossroad is refreshing. This is a middle school library or teen romance that combines selkie mythology and a human teen who is reluctant to share her concerns about being gay. The book takes a stand against pollution, adding an environmental element to the storyline. The inclusion of a section entitled Extras exposes the author-illustrator's design technique. Her setting is well depicted with the graphic novel and the emotions of Morgan and Kelsey are fully expressed. This book is creative and inclusive. It's a must read love story. Girl on the Line by Faith Gardner. Gardner offers readers the opportunity to look inside the mind of a suicide attempt victim. The selection of Journey as the protagonist's name brings hope and reveals a path to the future. Readers meet Journey after she ingests pills and awakes in a local hospital. The story moves powerfully toward revealing information concerning mental illness as Journey helps others deal with issues of mental health, sexual orientation, and family crisis. As a high school senior, her dedication is inspiring, yet we readers know that her struggle with her future self is going to cause heartbreaking challenges. Many readers will laugh and cry with Journey. Gardner's newest YA novel is well written and intended for grade nine plus readers. Adults who work with or have teens at home are advised to give Girl in the Line a read. This is an authentic and important story, one that is far too often relived. The use of poetry enhances the storyline and helps facilitate an atmosphere of feeling and healing. A personal experience inspired this title, which has stunning prose and healthy attitudes, attitudes toward mental health and sexual orientation issues. Home is Not a Country by Safara El Hilio. Nima feels lost. She doesn't fit in anywhere. Her family lives in the U.S., but came from an Arabic-speaking country. Beautifully written in verse, 
this novel is haunting, magical, real, and important as it reveals how new immigrants are frequently treated in our country. What was typically bullying and taunting about clothing, customs, and religion became far worse following the events of 9-11. Knowing that many resent her and others not born in the U.S. like her, Niemer searches to find a true version of herself. An additional stress is the realization that she might have been called by a different name. She struggles to balance her reality with the alternative backstory. El Hilo tells a powerful story, one that requires readers to step away from their familiar in this magical realism novel. An imaginary trip to her ancestral homeland offers a glimpse into the past. This book offers a portrait of a teenage girl who wants to know herself and feel comfortable in her new country. This reviewer was unable to put home is not a country aside. It required an un uninterrupted read from cover to cover. Regardless of the obvious anger exhibited by some characters and the hate crimes committed, the author and this reader are hopeful that we Americans can do far better. Recommended for grades seven to 10. We Can Be Heroes by Kylie Macaulay. Gun violence is the major theme in this beautifully written contemporary YA book, which successfully tackles multiple tough topics. A small town is reeling after Cassie is shot and killed at her school by her ex-boyfriend. Nothing about the story is really normal. After all, most best friends do not share their experiences with the ghost of a tragic crime victim. The tale is told by four characters, the ghost of Cassie, who narr narrates in verse, her best friends, Beck and Vivian, and a podcaster named Merrick. Beck and Vivian take a stand by creating and painting mystical figures around town to immortalize Cassie. We Can Be Heroes tackles timely topics, including domestic violence, gun violence, grief, trauma, and murder. Mature themes, diverse characters on a quest for vengeance as well as justice, makes this a stunning paranormal book sure to appeal to high school students. Readers will feel that the author is making a call of action to end violence against women as they learn that it is fine to reach out for help. Call and Response, the story of Black Lives Matter by Veronica Chambers, tells the story of the foundation and rise of Black Lives Matter and how events throughout US history led up to the movement. We learn about the backgrounds of the activists and organizers behind Black Lives Matter, the history and power of protests, and the many forms activism can take. Timelines, color photographs, plenty of additional text features, and even a protest playlist make this an accessible and engaging read for teens. The book ends with further resources, interviews with the founders, and an author's note indicating that plenty of work still remains to be done and that this story is far from over. Recommended for grades five and up. The Troubled Girls of Dragmere Academy by Anne Ursu. In the kingdom of Illyria, boys are sought out and tested for magical talent so that they might become sorcerers capable of defending the land against a deadly curse known as the Dread. When Mariah accidentally disrupts her brother Lucas' test, she's sent to Dragomir Academy, a school for troubled girls. Alongside the other girls, Mariah tries to figure out how to shape herself into the expectations of a society that doesn't have a place for her. She quickly realizes that what they've been told their whole lives is not the full truth, and that those with power will do anything to keep it for themselves. This captivating feminist fantasy is a must-have for middle grade collections. Strong female characters fighting for their place in a patriarchal society along with a critical message about the question that we must all remember to ask ourselves, who does the story serve? Get this into the hands of fans of Chris Colfer's A Tale of Magic series, recommended for grades five through eight. When You Look Like Us by Pamela N. Harris. When 16-year-old Jason Murphy's sister, Nick, goes missing, Jay assumes that as per usual, she's just out with her drug dealer boyfriend. But when Nick has gone longer than normal, Jay begins to think that something terrible has happened to her. He quickly realizes that the police and the media are of no real help and that he is going to have to save his sister himself. This book is a powerful display of the disparities, stereotypes, and systemic racism present in our communities, particularly when it comes to missing black girls. The story is riveting and frustrating and heartbreaking and will keep readers flying through the pages right up until its unpredictable ending. A book that stays with you, this is a needed addition to YA shelves. Recommended for grades nine and up. Muted by Tammy Charles. 17-year-old Afro-Latina Denver and her two best friends, Shaq and Dolly, are determined to make it big in the music industry. 
When they get noticed by superstar Mercury Ellis at one of his shows, they know this is their shot. But tensions rise between the girls as Shaq feels this isn't the best or safest opportunity for them, and Dolly ends up second tier compared to Denver. The glitz and glamour of becoming a music superstar begins to get overshadowed by broken promises, dark secrets, and various forms of abuse. As the reality of the situation becomes more complicated and bleak, Denver must formulate a plan to escape the clutches of Merck, leading to an ending that will undoubtedly shock readers. This is a verse novel that goes back and forth between Denver's experiences with Merck and her return flight with her father. It exposes the often overlooked and sadly dismissed seedy underbelly of the music industry, with Merck as an obvious stand-in for well-known musicians with these predatory backgrounds. It is essential for teens to recognize exploitation, sexual assault, and the patterns of abusive relationships, making this an important read. Recommended for grades nine and up. We Must Not Forget, Holocaust Stories of Survival and Resistance by Deborah Hopkinson is an excellent addition to middle grade World War II collections. Hopkinson presents true stories of Jewish children and teens organized by geographic location, Germany and the Netherlands, France, and Poland. Each section begins with an introduction to each individual, whose stories follow within its chapters. Look, listen, remember sections throughout the book provide resources for survivor interviews, letters, and other primary sources. Maps, timelines, and thorough background information help to put each story in context so that even readers with little previous knowledge of these events will be able to access and understand the atrocities of the Holocaust, as well as the dangers faced by, and the bravery of, those who resisted and survived. Impassioned writing and impeccable research convey the importance of unearthing these accounts and the urgency of preserving them for future generations. Recommended for grades five through eight. Rescue by Jennifer A. Nielsen. Set in Nazi-occupied France, Meg Kenyon and her family are working undercover to assist the Allied forces during World War II. Her father left 657 days ago, and Meg has not heard from him since. All she has left of him is a jar of codes that he has left for her to decipher. When she discovers her father has been captured, Meg takes on the mission to rescue him. Armed with some spy gear and what she believes is the key to saving her father, his last cipher, Meg is tasked with helping a family of German refugees flee to neutral Spain. She must use every bit of bravery and skill she has to bring her father home. Great character development and nonstop action, coupled with an introduction to ciphers and codes, will keep readers invested and anticipating what will happen next as the story unfolds. Meg learns an important lesson that you can't judge a person merely based on where they come from, which of course is always a welcome reminder to us all. Additional information about the British Special Operations Executive is included in the back of the book. This is a wonderful addition to any middle grade historical fiction collection, recommended for grades five through eight. 